In this video, I want to discuss the Court of Appeal decision there, delivered on the 2nd of March 2021, in the Gemma Doherty and John Waters challenge to the constitutionality and validity of certain measures taken by the Irish state in relation to introducing regulations and laws to do with COVID-19 and dealing with them. There is a YouTube video, a couple of YouTube videos on my channel which deal with the question of the High Court case brought by O'Doherty and Waters. But this one then is the Court of Appeal. They were thrown out of the High Court as it were insofar as it was held to be a case without merit. The High Court case was a judicial review procedure and that was a mistake and nevertheless there's some interesting observations in the Court of Appeal decision which was issued there this week. First one, the Court of Appeal referred to the High Court decision addressing the question of whether an arguable case had been made out by O'Doherty and Waters. This is a low threshold but a threshold nevertheless. In other words, in order to have a judicial review they must make out that they have an arguable case. This is, as I say, a low threshold, but there is a threshold. Previously, Justice Charlton had commented in a 2015 case, any issue in law can be argued, but that's not the test. A point of law is only arguable within the meaning of the relevant decisions if it could, by the standards of a rational preliminary analysis, ultimately have a prospect of success. These comments were approved by the Court of Appeal in this case, and that is why they failed to get over this filtering process in order to have a judicial review hearing. Secondly, the Court of Appeal agreed with the High Court that the procedure followed by O'Doherty and Waters should have been by way of a plenary summons, not judicial review. If they had adopted the plenary uh, procedure, they wouldn't have had to worry about the filtering process through which they had to go and which they essentially failed. So the Court of Appeal makes the point. Interestingly, I would though simply observe in passing that had the applicants taken on board or was said to them, not once but on a number of occasions, about the inappropriateness of proceeding by way of judicial review and the desirability of proceeding by way of plenary proceedings, that they would have avoided the filtering process at which stage they in fact stumbled. So here's the Court of Appeal telling O'Doherty and Waters that had they listened they could have gone by way of plenary summons, not judicial review, and they wouldn't have got involved in this failure at getting over the filtering process involved in a judicial review. Thirdly, Court of Appeal made the point that in relation to the arguments made by O'Doherty and Waters as to the administration of justice in public, made the point that the members of the public and the media and so on and so forth could very well uh, access the hearing of the Court of Appeal or the High Court by webcam or virtual camera. Obviously every courtroom has a physical limit and in the current climate with the social distancing measures and so on that was not possible but there was no difficulty in accessing the justice accessing as to how it was carried out by a virtual courtroom. Fourthly the High Court held that no rights in the Constitution are absolute and the applicants argued that the limitations of right and restrictions were disproportionate. But they had failed to put forward any evidence to support this assertion. In other words, the fact that the rights in the Constitution uh, are not absolute, O'Doherty and Waters seem to accept. However, they claimed that they were disproportionate and the limitations on the rights and restrictions were disproportionate, but they didn't put forward any evidence. Fifthly, they argued that the statistics from the HSE were fraudulent. These are the statistics as to the uh, number of people contracting the COVID-19 illness and passing away or dying as a consequence of it. The Court of Appeal found very telling the fact that the Irish statistics were no different from most other countries and yet again O'Doherty and Waters had failed to put forward any evidence. At another stage in the course of oral submissions according to the Court of Appeal 
the applicant, Miss O'Doherty, asserted without equivocation that there is a cure available for coronavirus in the form of hydro hydroxychloroquine, zinc and vitamin C. But again, the Court of Appeal makes the point that one is reminded of comments in another context of the existence of alternate facts. In other words, making assertions, making speeches, engaging in rhetoric does not prove anything. In the Court of Appeal's discussion of the case, it held, I should say in clear and unequivocal terms that I regard these proceedings as misconceived and as being entirely without merit. The arguments might advanced might have a certain appeal if addressed to a flag-waving assembly outside the customs house, but have no purchase when addressed to a court of law. The sixth interesting point that I see in this Court of Appeal decision is that the court actually makes the point that it's not inconceivable that a serious challenge could be mounted to one or other of the measures introduced by the state. But what I am absolutely clear about is that the applicants have not done that. So the Court of Appeal did hold out some sort of a prospect of a success in challenging one or other of the measures but O'Doherty and Waters did not have the evidence, didn't put forward the evidence. The Court of Appeal recognised that the applicants were sincerely held or the views of the applicants were sincerely held but an individual disagreeing with government policy and legislation does not provide the basis for a constitutional challenge. The Court of Appeal said Bald assertions do not morph into anything more than that, merely because the assertions are couched in strong or indeed extravagant language. For my part, I must make it clear that I am afraid that the arguments advanced by the applicants in the High Court and before the Court of Appeal involve arguments that might possibly have a place in the political arena, though that is far from saying that they would carry the day there or would have significant support there, but they are quite out of place in a court of law. Eight. The political tone of the applicants' assertions are evident in their affidavits and oral submissions. The applicants were saying that the lockdowns, the masks, the contact tracing, the vaccines are key measures used by the state uh, to reduce the spread of the virus, yet all of the assertions made by O'Doherty and Waters were based on conjecture without any basis in fact. The applicants go on to make various highly contentious assertions presented as scientific fact but, again, no evidence. The court went on to hold that I am firmly of the view that no remotely statable basis for challenging the impugned provisions has been made out. Far-fetched assertions, no matter how extravagant the language, do not come anywhere close to meeting the G versus DPP threshold. The applicant's contentions clearly fail to meet the arguability threshold. And number nine, the Court of Appeal agreed with the High Court that the Charter of Fundamental Rights was not applicable in the case because its relevance arises when EU law is being interpreted and implemented. There is no EU law at issue in this case. The Court of Appeal went on to say that I am of the view that these proceedings, controversial as they are and tendentious as they are, do not raise any serious legal issue which would justify the grant of leave. Quite simply, they involved the applicants claiming to know better than the government and the Oireachtas. They dismissed the advice available to the government, whether internal or international. By way of example, the first named applicant refers to the World Health Organization as a private corporation. Costs then will follow the event. That's the ordinary rule which the Court of Appeal referred to. And basically, the Court of Appeal said that unless we are requested to consider departing from the ordinary rule, that is what will happen in this case and I think the Court of Appeal gave them 14 days to make submissions on that if they wanted the Court of Appeal to depart from the ordinary rule of granting costs to the other side, to the state, not to the applicants. So all in all, to put it at its mildest, to put it at its simplest, this is a case according to the High Court and according to the Court of Appeal without merit. It's a case without evidence. It's a case without facts. It's a case that's full of extravagant language and high-flown rhetoric, but no evidence, no data, no medical science, and it is bound to fail. They may well, and I think I saw on Twitter there today or yesterday, the indication that they may well be going to appeal this case to the Supreme Court. I'll let you draw your own conclusion or your own opinion as to the prospects of success there, but that 
as far as I can see, are nine interesting points to see and to draw from and lessons to take from that Court of Appeal decision. There's a blog post on my website on businessandlegal.ie and that blog post also contains the full or a link to the full decision of the Court of Appeal. It's worth having a look at, especially if you're interested in law, especially if you're interested in differentiating between the law and uh, politics and I hope you find this video useful. If you do, I'd appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below and you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you are, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I uh, upload a new video. Thanks for watching.